I believe he's turning off. Um, I can't say for sure, but I think that's sunset. Let's just wait and see. It is. Yeah, it is. Well, I think uh, that might be Wilshire Boulevard. He's getting off. All right, let's see. It's either Sunset or Wilshire. Let's, um, when he gets up to the corner, I'll be able to tell you. No, I think that's Sunset. Let's yeah, just it is wait too. And see. Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. Yep. Look at the people. Look at the people. At this very minute, 22 years ago tonight, O.J. Simpson was in the back of a white Ford Bronco while his longtime friend Al Cowlings was behind the wheel. For the next two hours, they would lead police on the most famous car chase in American history. 95 million people watched the chase on television that night, including on NBC, which ran Game 5 of the NBA Finals in a split screen with the chase. The trial of O.J. Simpson for the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman was billed as the trial of the century. But it and the not guilty verdict exposed the deep racial divide in this country. Earlier this year, many in the country were also transfixed by the FX miniseries, The People vs. O.J. Simpson, which it was cable's most watched new show of 2016. Now, if you're thinking to yourself that after the popularity of that series, there was no way people would have a desire to watch any more about O.J. this year, then you haven't seen the amazing new documentary by director Ezra Edelman. O.J. Simpson Made in America is a five-part documentary series that looks at one of the most extraordinary falls from grace in modern history. Chris Hayes sat down with Ezra Edelman and began by asking him what it was like devoting nearly eight hours to O.J. Simpson. This story is befitting of, the, of that length. I mean, there is that much in terms of his life, um, the story of L.A., the criminal justice system. For you to fully understand what happened in 1994 and 95, I feel like you got to go that deep. Did you know that when the project started? Like, the, 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 was the scope of it apparent to you, or was this something where you, you were doing the work on it, you were finding all this footage, discovering all these things, and it extended and extended? Well, the concept actually started out. I was, I was approached, because I don't think any person in their right mind would want to actually take this on um, in this way. And the initial concept was for five hours, five hours for TV. Um, and if that had not been the initial thing, I would have said no, because Frankly, so many people have tried to do or told stories about the trial. And if you have two hours to do it, what are you going to do when there's an expectation that you have to tell a story about right. those events? But how do you was, make it, uh, uh, how do you add to the story? Correct. Right? And, you, and the answer is you can't. Right. Um, and unless you have OJ himself sort right. of talking right. about it in a different way. And so for me, that initial concept, that, that canvas that was being offered was, it told me, oh, oh I can go backwards. I can go and tell the history. I can go tell this story about the LAPD and the black community in Los Angeles. I can examine OJ's rise to fame as a football star and as a commercial pitchman and really parse his racial identity. And, and by the way, all these things are necessary to understand just how crazy you, the trial was. It, it's like the, the experience of watching it is, it's like you, you lay the trains on these different tracks and then we just set them off. So, I mean, just the LAPD cop stuff was mind-blowing to me. I mean, there, there are things in there. I mean, I have read a lot about the Watts riots, and I obviously knew about Rodney King, but Yulia Love, a woman who was shot and killed by LAPD, and there was uh, essentially no punishment. Um, That's correct. You, you embed in, in, the, in the mind of the viewer what it would be like a little bit, I think, to be how you might think about the LAPD if you were a, a black Angelino and you walked into that trial room. And, and I think what's important about that is that, you know, as you know, the trial was so divisive. And, you know, people lining up, white, black, that deter, you know, sort of, and it really was simplified that if you were black, you, you thought he was innocent. And if you were white, you, you believed he was guilty. And then you had these clips when the verdict was read of black people celebrating and white people crying or then white people angry at black people celebrating. And then there's this sense of, well, I didn't understand. Why, why were black people cheering a murderer? That's what some people, that, the person that we believe to be a murderer. And for me, it's like, well, that's not that confusing. 
if you just understand the history, if you understand what has been happening in this city for the past 50 years, maybe you'd be able to empathize. And the only way you can do that is to actually go on this journey. There's this penny drop moment where you've got, there's this, this cop starts showing up in the interviews. And you know, you do all these interviews and this cop starts showing up and he's, he's there saying very kind of reactionary white cop stuff about black Angelinos and crime. And you're kind of thinking, okay, well, this is interesting. And then you get to the point where it's like, when we got to OJ's apart house, and you're like, oh, that, that guy was, he wasn't even Furman that we all know about, right? right. There's, there's another guy who has these views. That to me was like a real, I understood in this moment in a way I hadn't before what it must have felt like to interpret this through that prism. Well, then, then we did our job, because I think the other thing is this, you know, in essence, this is oral history. And you have all these characters who essentially dot the landscape of Los Angeles. You know, some live in, you know, the west side, some live in South LA. Right. And the way that we were telling the story, I really felt that they had to take you on this journey through this history. And by the way, and all of them have some role themselves in the OJ universe, Vortex. And you don't really realize that until you get to that part of the story. You're, you're, uh, you, you've got really incredible parents. Uh, your, 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 your mom is a longtime Marion Wright Edelman, of course, longtime civil rights um, activist, defender of children. Your father, a law professor, uh, famously resigned from the Clinton administration over welfare reform. One of the things that struck me as I watched this was this sense of like eternal recurrence. There was, there was a little bit of this, it was tough in some ways because it felt like, man, all this has been written before, and now here we are 20 years later, and we have Black Lives Matter, and we have footage of police violence. And do you, did you come away working on this project some thoughts about progress, about what progress has been made? Sure, but I don't know that a lot has been made. I mean, I, I do think that, and I think you hit the nail right on the head as far as when you watch this film, you immediately go to this place of, of thinking about the cyclical nature of history. Right. And then the fact that we spent so much time, and generationally, I don't know exactly how old you are, I'm 41. So I was in high school and Rodney King happened, and that was, that, so that, was, well. and that, that was day. That was an awakening, yeah. right? And then there's the riots. And in some ways, you know, that, that's, a, a, that's one of those times where your innocence, you know, gets ruined. You're like, oh, this, this happened, and I, I, this happens? I didn't, I didn't realize this. Um, but then when you realize, when you start thinking about this, well, this happened 27 years before. Yeah. You know, Watts exploded in violence. And in terms of when we decide over as a the culture, same stuff, over the same stuff, and you know, when we perk up yeah. and when we decide to pay attention and discuss, you know, when this stuff happens, but does it change? Yeah. And I think the last two years shows that nothing's really changed. Having said that, I do think LA, in LA, there has been some progress within the police department. That's undeniable. But then when you look at all the stuff that's happened, when you look at the stuff that's been happening in Chicago for the past couple of years, you do question whether we've yeah. made any progress. Ezra Edelman, uh, OJ Made in America. Do whatever you can to see this. Thanks so much, man. Really Thanks, appreciate Chris. it. Appreciate it.